Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us today, and I hope that you'll share this out on your social media platform. Get it out to as many people as can, because this particular information that I'm going to bring to you today from the Word of God uh, deals directly with a biblical worldview, and what you hear today is described as misinformation, disinformation. As I speak, one of the major platforms of social media has found itself at a collapse before a major interview. And then in the uh, UK and EU nations, uh, they've just said that this particular social media uh, platform that was going to air this uh, uh, presidential candidate interview, uh, warning them about misinformation, disinformation. This is a really big deal in the time that we're living in, and it's important for you to hear what uh, this briefing is all about today. The article that I cite for you is uh, titled, Can the Majority of Churches Be Trusted to Instill a Biblical Worldview? The article says, though we may not realize it, our worldview shapes every decision we make. A worldview is the intellectual, emotional, and spiritual filter every individual uses to experience, uh, interpret, and respond to reality. Possessing a biblical worldview sometimes called a biblical theism or a Christian worldview, implies that people's ideas about all aspects of life and eternity derive from scriptural principles and commands. That's what the believer is supposed to take and filter everything through the word of God and through the principles of God's word. And the article goes on to say that spiritual leadership eventually influences and affects the next generation, whether it is for God or against God. So recently, in an Arizona Christian university, uh, conducted their annual worldview survey. And according to the survey, there's a few alarming statistics that came out. I won't cite every one of them, but this one is very important. Of American adult born-again Christians, they said, only 13% hold a consistently biblical worldview. It goes on to cite other statistics from this particular uh, survey. But the things that I draw from this article... They asked the question, can the church, its pastors, or Christian leaders instill a biblical worldview into the youth uh, entrusted to them? Parents are to be confident about the churches to which they are delegating their spiritual mentorship of their kids. And it's important for us to realize from this survey, it says only 51%, now listen to this, only 51% of senior pastors have a consistently biblical worldview. Just 1% over half of the United States pastors, less than 30% of associate pastors, hold a consistently biblical worldview. Now watch this. Only 13% of teaching pastors in churches hold a biblical worldview. And of youth pastors, only 12%, according to this survey, have a consistent biblical worldview. What does that mean? Well, if the Bible is absolute and true, if the Bible is the basis of all living and life and truth, then ladies and gentlemen, these statistics are not only alarming, but should be speaking loudly to us concerning how we are to respond from a biblical worldview if you are a believer. Now, if you're not a believer, then the influences of this world and the winds of world uh, opinion, doctrines, and misinformation, disinformation, and out-and-out -out lies will continually control your life and your thinking. And you, now we're at a place of such delusion in our United States uh, elections, in the United States government, in the United States uh, overall, even in churches, and around the world for that matter, where deception has taken hold to such a degree that people have become hypocrites of their own self by looking into the face of truth and then either voting or having an opinion or deciding to go in the opposite direction of what they know to be truth. Now, hear me. You're, you may be entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is important for you to realize because if you don't have a foundation of absolute truth that is based in the word of God, then the likelihood of your deception is at a high percentage rate. According to this article, they suggest a few things that I think is important. One is to begin early training your child up in the way that they should go, according to Proverbs 22 and verse number six, because based upon this information, from the second year, from a child's 
uh, second birthday until they are 13 is the greatest formation of a biblical worldview or a worldview uh, entirely. What is it that influences them between ages two and 13? Secondly, they say to instill the continuous reinforcement of the spiritual foundations for that child. It is very clear that a child who has that kind of atmosphere will uh, most likely be in a position to be able to hold that biblical and, and spiritual worldview that not only their parents did, but to be able to go into their adult life with a biblical worldview as well. The third thing they say that is uh, troubling is an outsourcing of uh, parents. In other words, using other sources to be able to train their children. They pawn it off to the teachers or uh, pawn it off to society or I don't want to talk to them about this hot button, hot button issue or whatever it may be. When the Bible is very clear, it is up to the parents and those that are the guardians, the leaders, grandparents, and those that are in that biblical worldview to raise up the next generation to know those biblical truths. So if you're in a church that teaches a biblical worldview, then praise God, stay there and work through that church in the kingdom of God. But if you are in a church that is not taking the issues of the day and holding fast to the biblical truths, values, and worldview of the Bible, then the time to leave is right now and to find you a Bible-believing church. Our nation's worldview is one that is so important that if Christians do not guide that, if believers do not guide that back to the principles of God's word, where all truth is found, then it will run right off the cliff of deception. There's a few things that I want to share with you before we leave here, and this is the definitions that are found by the American Psychological Association concerning what you hear a lot about, and you're going to hear a lot about this in the days ahead. Uh, misinformation. Some people don't know how to define it, but based upon the American Psychological Association's definition, they say misinformation is false or inaccurate information getting the facts wrong. Well, let me tell you what the Bible says and what the Bible calls misinformation. It calls it a lie. One of the top 10, thou shall not lie. He goes on in the second portion of the Ten Commandments to tell us that we're not to bear false witness against one another. Misinformation is not to be a part of the believer's life, and I'm going to tell you why. Then there is the disinformation. What is that defined as by the American Psychological Association? Is Disinformation is false information, which is deliberately intended to mislead, intentionally misstating the facts. You know what the Bible calls that? Deception. That's exactly what the devil is doing today. And it's very interesting that the World Economic Forum that you've heard so much about cites that the number one issue just a year ago, they said, the number one issue, not the topic of climate change that they take up all the time and so forth, but the number one issue is misinformation and disinformation. Because if the minds of people can be influenced towards the truth, then they've lost them or vice versa. Here's what the Bible says. 2 Thessalonians 2, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed, displaying all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders. Now listen, and every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. So those that are perishing are more susceptible. Those that don't know the Lord and trust the Bible are in a state of a uh, decline, perishing, the Bible says. They perish, and here's the reason why. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and will believe the lie. And so that all would be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. In other words, because people reject the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the word of God, they will suffer what the Bible calls strong delusion and believe the lie of the coming Antichrist and the very spirit of Antichrist that's working in our world today. Note that word, strong delusion. The word means a working of error. In other words, people will be so susceptible to what we are hearing as the description, misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, that the Bible calls delusion or deception. That is working error after error is another what, the, what that means. It means sin after sin, evil after evil. In other words, once you start with a false uh, idea, a false theology, 
everything from that falls into a lie category because it's all filtered through that kind of mentality. They will become so steeped, the Bible says, in rejecting the gospel more and more that according to one uh, theologian, it is the law of life that those who take this, this step, disbelieving the gospel, go further and further astray into error. The Bible tells us that men who reject the truth are bound to end up accepting the evil as true. Did you get that? There, thereby, God uses Satan uh, as a means of punishing them because they would not love the truth of God's word. God gives them over in Romans chapter 1 to a wickedness and evil and a desperate condition. Here's what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 4. For the time would come when men would not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them great number of teachers that say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn into myths. Why? How are we to combat that as believers? Here's the answer found in the word of God, 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show yourself approved of God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth, and shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. What is important for us to do is to search out the truth for ourselves. Don't just take it for face value. The Bible says that the Bereans in the word of God studied to find out if what the disciples were saying was true. I would say to you today, my friends, whatever you do, Search it out for yourself. Be diligent in the Word of God to know what truth is. And as you're reading the news and hearing it coming across the air, it's important for you to be able to know what truth is. And the Bible says when you know the truth, that truth will make you free. Thank you for joining us for Prophecy Files Briefing today. I encourage you to keep looking towards the sky because Jesus Christ is coming soon.